While metal smiths are busy working with their hammers and metal, our next workshop deals with rubber, fur and electronics. Animatronic animals are needed for amusement parks, not to mention restaurants and hotels these days. So the people who make them are kept very busy with their furry and sometimes ferocious creations. John Wood makes being a CEO look like fun. Oh, it's great. It's, it's a load of fun. Of course, it helps that his company, Sally Corp, is a colourful place full of animated characters. This is our robot factory here. This is where we build the mechanical components that all the characters uh, require. A disaster and chaos. Sally Corp builds robots and rides for amusement parks all over the world. We've built rides in the Philippines, in Korea, in China. Currently, they're building the animatronics for the Great Wolf Lodge in Niagara Falls, Canada. Great Wolf Lodge uh, is an a, a animated musical show. The characters are going to communicate to kids and tell bedtime stories, and they're going to be able to participate in sing-alongs and the like. For the show, they need to build 16 characters, including a talking tree. It'll be fully foliated with eye mechanism and mouth mechanism. The challenge with the Wolf Lodge animals is to make them look friendly yet real, but they also have to last a long time. This moose, this animated character, has to stand there for years and perform. And when he moves, he can't shake, he can't wobble, he has to be very sturdy. So he has steel reinforced legs, but they are a little thicker than a real moose legs might be. Once the designs are agreed upon, then it's over to the sculptor. The clay he uses is called chavant, the same stuff they use for modeling cars. You heat it up and it's very plastic, but once it cools down, it's harder so that you can tool more detail into it. These clay sculptures are used to cast silicone masks. The silicone is used for parts that need to move, like a face. And once it's cured, we open it up and we have the skin for our robots, which will be about a quarter of an inch thick. And it's flexible. And we'll then send it to the other departments to be animated. Each robot also has parts that don't move. They need to be made of harder material. Those molds are sculpted from foam. We will start off with a uh a block of foam, like you see over here, and we will take that and, and project an image onto the, the foam, and from there we will carve it out. These foam pieces are then covered in urethane and fiberglass resin. Once everything is molded, it's time to give them movement. This is Thunder the Moose. He's going to the Great Wolf Lodge. I think it's in Niagara, Canada. And I'm working on making his tail move and making his head move. When I get his head, it's going to move here at the base of the neck, and then he'll have a left right center. So I'm building all the pieces that make that happen. Lena will give Thunder his movement with the help of pneumatics. Pneumatics, that is, air pressurized mechanisms, continue to be the main source of movement for animatronics for very good reason. It's designed for millions of strokes and cycles without you know, need for repair. That's why it's such a good use for the type of technology that we use. In movies, they'll use servo motors more because they really only need it for a few minutes for the shoot. In our application, pneumatics or hydraulics become a much more reliable long-term use. Where Sally Corp is going more high-tech is in the computer that runs their animatronics. This is our SLAM. The SLAM gives us eight output channels of audio. That's, that's better than surround sound. Surround sound has 5.1. Uh, this device has eight individually triggered channels of audio. Or we can trigger them all at once and put different sounds on all the different channels. Also gives us our digital output that goes to the characters for motion control and the signals that go to control lighting, dimming it up and down, or control robotic lighting. In the past, these elements weren't tied together, which meant a character's lip movement might not match its words. Now with SLAM, everything is perfectly synchronized. There's nothing like a rainbow. Over the years, Sally Corp has designed many styles of animated characters, from Scooby-Doo to talking skeletons. Since the characters in Wolf Lodge are less cartoon and more real life, it was up to the art finishers to make it all look good in the end. We take the characters that come out of mechanical and pneumatics and make them look like the characters that uh, the designers have designed. 
Not only do they have to find, attach and uh, cut yeah. fake fur to look real, they also have to paint it. But the realistic characters are, are very challenging because, you know, it's, it's a fine line between, you know, fake and real. And what I try and do is spray on a 45 degree angle and that'll just catch the tips. So right now I'm just trying to, just trying to catch the tips of the, of the um, fur because it's got that umberish color. From start to finish, it takes about four months to build a single character. Soon, these characters will call Niagara Falls their home, and John's team will move on to its next project. Luckily, work at Sally never seems to be dull. But we're really in the fun business, not in the robot business. <laughs>